So Neo CEO just gave shareholders an important update, and this was just a few days ago at a Ningbo face-to-face -face meeting where the CEO and a bunch of Neo owners sat there and discussed about things. So there was some stuff to talk about, sub brand stuff that he will update you guys on, and also uh, MPV related because this was right at the launch of the Li Auto Mega MPV and then he was also addressing a lot of the questions towards this. The first very prominent thing is the fact that he personally said that even if Neo came out with an MPV and it was over 500k RMB, he would not even personally buy it because the MPV should not be priced that expensively. It should not be that pricey. And for context, uh, X9 is around 350,000 RMB, and that's probably a fair price. But the Li Auto Mega, way overpriced, 559,000 RMB, extremely expensive, and it's shaping out to be a total flop. So yesterday I made a video about the specs of the car, try to keep the first four minutes very unbiased and then the late latter four minutes I kind of tore through it but uh, to put things in perspective all right every year whenever a new car launches the company shares the pre-order data how many people have locked in their orders but this year the auto mega they did not share this data probably because the pre-order amounts the locked in pre-order numbers were terrible and it is rumored that that number is only 1,300 which is very very low for context the ES8 alone when it was launched the people that locked in their pre-orders all right from Shanghai alone were more than 1,300 so it seems like the Li Auto Mega MPV is too expensive and might be shaping out to be total flop and there's this other interesting dilemma that the ceo brings out the, he says well you gotta define whether the car the mpv is for family purposes or for commercial purposes because most mpvs are for commercial purposes to drive the boss around the city all right and that would be a commercial purpose but you see that Li Auto is marketing it as a family purpose oriented car. For family car, you buy an SUV, right? And then also, uh, with such a big car, where are you going to park this? How are you going to navigate all the underground parking turns and, and to get into those parking basements and those parking spots? Uh, how are you going to even park the car? because the car is so big. So there's a problem right there. No, the MPV, like the CEO said, it should not be priced above 500K RMB. Even if his, uh, Neil's own MPV, if it was that expensive, he would not buy it. So that's pretty interesting. But where is the MPV? What is the price point that he's gonna come out with? And, and what is it gonna look like? Well, he also said that it is too early to tell what the MPV is gonna be based on, but they definitely do have plans to make an MPV, but they have to first decide whether or not it's gonna be commercial or family. And I think a lot of that is based on the success of uh, Li Auto Mega. If that thing flops, then you know it's definitely gonna be commercial. Family route, SUV. MPV, commercial. And also he talked about what kind of platform is he going to base the car off of? Because right now, existing 2.0 vehicles have all been pushed out. Second generation platform vehicles all out there. Going forward, there's only going to be third generation vehicles based on the ET9 with those uh, clear motion hydraulic suspensions, game changing suspension. Future vehicles are going to have that. So they're most likely going to have the MPV be based off of that platform. And it seems like that they're going to have a, probably a much more affordable pure electric, of course, MPV that is based on the NT3.0 platform 
and they have plans that it's going to come out soon, uh, maybe in a couple of years. But pricing, it's still too early to tell about pricing. So let's have a listen about what the CEO said. And this is AI translated. All right. Have a listen. MPV is definitely in the planning stages, but we haven't finalized the project this early. In fact, for the past few years, we've been looking at whether it's for household or commercial use. We've certainly already started the project. Of course, our MPV is definitely based on our third generation platform, developing some of the latest features. Now cars iterate quickly, so it's quite a challenge to decide which generation platform to use for this. So our second generation car, as everyone knows, is already out. All the cars we are currently working on are definitely based on the third generation platform after the ET9 to make new cars. So we're exploring new models on this brand like MPV, which definitely have many advantages. So we're definitely going to do it, but it's too early to talk about pricing. Let's not spoil it yet. Now, the second thing that he talked about was to clarify sub-brand battery swap. Some people are worried that the sub-brand car and partnership cars are going to take over battery swap for new owners. And basically, uh, you'll have to fight for battery swap with taxis and all these kind of cars. And you won't be able to get a battery swap if you buy a Neo. And a lot of even competitors are, have been saying that. Hey, you buy the swap, they're working with uh, those, those Chang'an and those guys. And soon you'll be fighting for batteries with the taxis. You're not going to be able to do a battery swap. So a lot of competitors have been saying that. But the CEO clarified that Alps sub-brand and uh, the new partnership cars that can do battery swap are all going to be swapping on the public, mostly on the public swap network mostly all right so that just means that there's going to be some all right some gen 3 gen 4 swap stations that are also going to be uh, opened up to the sub brand but all existing gen 2 and gen 1 swap stations are 100 percent going to be neos neo exclusive they can't even fit an elps battery even if you wanted to all right so this is something he really wanted to clarify on. And NEOs can also swap on the public swap network. And that's just going to make owning a NEO much more uh, uh, convenient. So you got a ton of swap stations, NEO swap stations and public swap stations. Whereas for the sub-brand, you're going to have public swap stations and only a little, a few NEO swap stations. All right. Have a listen. Don't be concerned that if we open up our own battery exchange resources, other users will preempt them. Our general direction is this. We have an understanding. We have an exclusive network and a shared network. The exclusive network is for NIO users. Most of our battery exchange stations today are exclusive, and we will continue to build them. The shared network is for everyone to share, and NIO users can go to the shared network to change batteries. A shared network cannot be monopolized by others, so you don't need to be particularly worried about this and don't be taken out of context. Overall, the direction of the business is very clear. All right. Neo is going to continue on putting out more swap stations. They're going to continue building these public swap stations with partnerships and with the sub brand. Sub brand's going to come out soon. And that's going to be the saving grace for Neo, in my personal opinion. And here we have an excellent question from MS on my Discord. And he said that there's a lot of skepticism within the new community that the Alps sub-brand car will be too good and zombie ET5 and ET5T sales and ES6 sales. Well, this sort of coincides with one of the rumors that I heard from the new owner of 23 Neos. And that is the fact that Neo is potentially canceling the 5 series and the 6 series vehicles in the future. They're, they're probably going to do it and have the sub-brand have those cars essentially and then you only focus on the luxury segment all right and to be honest and my response to him was the fact that you're, you're definitely not going to get the same level of luxuriousness and the brand itself is, is just not the same for example uh porsche taycan and then you got the xiaomi su7 right the xiaomi su7 might have like better specs than Porsche Taycan, better features, but much cheaper price. But would you ever say that the SU7 is a better car than the Porsche Taycan? 
even if it's got better specs? No, you wouldn't. All right. So that that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. It, it might have like uh, features that people want, uh, screens, all that kind of stuff. But definitely luxuriousness not going to be there. The amount of swap stations compared to how many swap stations Neo can access not going to be there. And the service obviously not going to be there. The perks not going to be there for the sub brand. It is just a card for the masses that can do battery swap with some killer features that everybody wants. So, and even for me personally, when I drove the second gen ES6, I felt that that car was really lacking in terms of luxuriousness compared to my first gen EC6, okay? So clearly they wanted to separate the seven series in terms of luxuriousness with the six series. So the six series, definitely a little bit underwhelming compared to the seven series. You could feel the premiumness and luxuriousness of the seven series vehicles, uh, the ES7, the EC7 especially, and obviously the ES8, they just felt very premium. Even the driving feel feels very premium on those cars. And this is something you have to experience in person. And for me personally, like when I was driving the ES6, it, it felt good, but definitely no luxurious feeling compared to my current car in terms of uh, driving feedback and also uh, just in terms of like f the feel of uh, the driver, all right? There, it was a little bit more restricting on the leg space, uh, and that kind of stuff, all right? So there's definitely going to be a very big difference, and I'm not too worried about that. Uh, obviously, more cars isn't bad. I mean, think about it this way. Tesla is selling a lot more Model 3s than Model, uh, Model S's, all right? They're selling a lot more Model Ys than Model X's. So it's going to be sort of a similar story, all right? Model 3 performance just does really well, really fast car. Uh, some people might just, you know, try to save some money and go for that. There's nothing wrong with that. So at the end of the day, you want to see delivery numbers increase, even if average selling price comes down. That's to be expected. All right, they're also going to launch the Firefly sub brand at sub 200k RMB. So that's going to be even cheaper, but that's a bit down the line. But as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Peace out.